Continuing on with the 1953 Westinghouse automatic washing machine, in my past TikTok, I showed that we got it working, we found a bunch of leaks, and I was able to get it working and wash a load of laundry after fixing a lot of the leaks, and it did its full cycle, it went off, it did its spin cycle, it washed the clothes, did a full load just fine, but we have another leak. Now, if you'll remember in my last video, we found a tiny little rust hole at the bottom of the tub and was able to fix that, but now it's still dripping for some reason, and I have to find out why this time. This is the third time I'm going to have to be taking the barrel apart. This is just the reality of restoration sometimes. You just get things that pop up that you don't expect, and you just have to deal with them, you know? So I don't want to take the front half of the tub completely out like I've done in the past, so that's why, see, I just jacked it up right there. Uh, that blue jack, that blue and silver jack right here. I jacked it up, I got the ho the big hose clamp off, I, mean, I consider it a hose clamp, it's just a big metal clamp, I got it off because I want to put water in it, I want to get a garden hose and put water in it and just observe the barrel or tub, whichever you want to call it, and see where it's coming out at. Um, I just want to see where that drip is coming out because there's no way it can be coming out from that hole that I fixed. So I got it full of water, I got the drip going on. And lo and behold, there is one spot on this entire tub that's dripping. You can literally see it right there. And uh, the other side, completely dry, nothing wrong with it. So we're going to get some more silicone. And uh, I hate using so much silicone, but the only other option would be to get a gasket that goes around the entire um, tub, uh, like a replacement for the original, which obviously is not available anymore. They don't make washing machines like this anymore. Um, so this is really my, my only option. It's my best bet. It's pretty much all I got. And uh, that's the best fix we can really come up with. But silicone works pretty good. I mean, the conditions I'm using this silicone in are not nearly as violent as the conditions that we use them on cars, you know, underneath a hood where it's hot, it's under pressure. So um, I think it'll be fine. So we got to hook the front suspension springs up. See what I'm doing right here? One on each side that tub sits like midair and those springs help it when it's you know during its spin cycle keep it stable so you can see i just let the jack down i let the springs are now holding up the barrel and uh you i'm gonna jiggle it right now you can see i mean it just suspended in midair i mean it's kind of funny how they did that um but now we're on to the next part i'm letting that silicone dry you don't want to immediately put water in it while it's drying because you could that water might push that wet silicone out of uh, out of where you had it so i'm very very carefully taking the clips off i'm taking the emblems off because we're prepping the machine to uh, um, i'm gonna do body work to it and prime it and paint it so all the emblems now have to come off so this is behind the front face of the machine and these, these little clips, um, not even nuts and bolts, it's just these little clips hold the emblems on. That's the gold Westinghouse emblem there. I love that Westinghouse emblem. We're going to get that re-golded. And this one too, the deluxe emblem, you see these clips are so tiny. Uh, you have to be so very, very careful not to destroy the, the peg. But you should destroy that like button right now as you're watching this video for me because it pushes me up in the YouTube algorithm, suggests my video to more people, and it helps grow my channel, and it's totally free to you. So it would mean the world to me. But anyway, these emblems are very thin, and uh, I just don't want to break them because I'm a, you're not getting another one. And you can see up close why I need to have it redone. It looks good, but you can see how it's bumpy. See how it's bumpy and it's kind of pitted. Um, it's not smooth. That's just what happens over time. It oxidizes. Uh, the, um, the finish gets kind of messed up over time. Uh, so you just have to, you know, have it redone. So now uh, this is the top of the machine, what sits on top, and I'm taking off the laundromat emblem. I'm taking off this stainless steel um, backing plate piece, and I'm going to take off those arrows. They're not really arrows or whatever you want to call them, the little accents. And now, if you guys remember, I when I was talking about my dryer that I did, I broke the glass, okay? So I'm doing this in the grass, so that I don't break the glass. I'm taking it apart in a place that's nice and soft and plush so that I don't break the glass. So now that I have the emblems off and in my truck, I'm gonna take them down to the chroming place so that I can have them re-golded. Um, you can see the Westinghouse emblem here, how it's pitted, those bumps on that on the, on the letters there. 
Uh, those bumps aren't something you can clean off. Uh, they don't come off with any amount of cleaning. Um, you know, you just have to have them redone. And uh, here's, I'm going to the plating shop right now. It's actually plated. It's a chemical plating process. And I'm so glad that I have one in town because uh, there's no way to do it at your house. So while the emblems are out getting replated, I'm gonna start sanding down the machine in order to get it ready to prime so that we can eventually paint it. And I start out by sanding everything down with 80 grit. So this is a pneumatic, uh, we call it a mud hog. It's, uh, it's an air powered tool and I got 80 grit sandpaper on the disc there. That's what I used to sand it down initially. Uh, that's going to that's gonna scratch it up pretty good. Uh, that's going to get imperfections out. That's going to get paint off. It's going to get it ready to prime. And this is the same process I use for cars and for anything else I'm doing. Anything with paint on it, I start out with 80 grit. That knocks off all the big stuff and gets it ready. So after we do the sanding, we'll start with the body work, uh, which means, you know, fixing dents. And uh, you see that rust right there? Um, that spot there right in between the top and the bottom panel that's kind of rusty we'll use a uh, bondo in order to fix the pits of that because it's not bad enough to cut the metal out and replace it i mean that's that's way too extra uh, we can bondo over that which is going to fix the pits and cover those pits up so i got the deluxe emblem off it's going to look so much better here we have all the bodywork tools we got the bondo on the right the yellow paddle to spread it the little tube of hardener, screwdriver, lacquer thinner, and a rag, and there is my white board that I use to mix up the Bondo on, which I need a new one. I've been using this same white board since I was like 11 years old. Uh, it's cracked, it's broken, I definitely need a new one. So I'm gonna start out by kind of mixing the Bondo up a little bit, and then I'm gonna put it on my paddle board there. And uh, it's not activated yet, so it stays in this kind of liquidy you know goop form until you put the hardener on it and i'm putting the hardener on it right now that red stuff you don't need a lot i mean for all the bondo you need you do not need a lot of hardener just a little line will do it and a word to the wise bondo hardens faster the hotter it is and in arizona where it's usually pretty warm you definitely don't need a lot of hardener uh, because you don't want it to start getting too hard on you too fast because you won't be able to get all your dents in time So you want to mix it to where it's this nice even color It's like a nice red color and then you go ahead and, and hurry up You kind of want to do it fast, but not too fast where you mess up But you kind of want to start getting it on there, you know So you want to paddle it over all the dents and imperfections that you find because uh, I'm telling you, this stuff will harden in maybe, I mean, not even two minutes in, it starts to go. I mean, it starts to harden up on you. So I got the first layer down on all the little imperfections I found. And you got to use lacquer thinner and a rag in order to clean your paddle and the board. You can't use like soapy water. Lacquer thinner uh, really gets it off of there. This is a process that's very familiar to me. Bring, brings back a lot of memories. I started doing body work with my dad when I was like 12 years old. So the smell of lacquer thinner and cleaning these paddles, I'm very familiar with this process. So you can see all these pink spots uh, is where I laid it down, kind of nice and thin. You don't want to put a lot on if you don't have to. We don't really need a lot. I mean, this is not really a huge job. So got it all over the dents and the little rust pits and everything like that. And this is the front kickboard that goes below the door and that's what gets the most kind of beating up you know so now that it's hardened we got our 80 grit roll of sandpaper and my pneumatic sander here and i could do this by hand this is not like a super big surface area to do but i just want to use this tool because it just makes things go faster i don't want to be doing this for days and days on end i love this tool it makes things go quick but i always finish it up by hand just to kind of make it perfect and now that it's ready to prime, we got the prep all and a rag. And the purpose of the prep all right here, what I'm doing, I'm just giving it a nice light wipe down with prep all. That takes all of the oil imperfections off of the metal. This is such a technical process because even your fingers carry enough oil to mess up the primer. If the primer hits a spot where your finger was, the primer won't stick. It's that technical. So. You want to use this prep all to get any oil and residue and anything like that off so that you can prime it and it will stick. So here's the primer. Here's what it looks like. It's not out of a spray can. This is like professional car, high build primer, all that. Uh, we put it in the paint cup and it's specific measurements of primer, 
to reducer and to activator and all that stuff you got to make sure it's right for the temperatures you're spraying in and you go ahead and you put it in a paint gun and you put a mask on and you go ahead and do it up and my dad is usually the one that actually uh, sprays the primer and paint because uh, this is a skill that you have to develop over time and i'm not like the best at it but um the the place to learn to paint is is primer not actually paint because primer is very forgiving and during the sanding process after the primer you can get runs out you can get a lot of imperfections out with sanding after primer but when you paint your paint is pretty much the paint you're not changing it after you paint but primer is pretty forgiving like you can see there that middle piece you can see all those lines across it where i like didn't get it fully but this is also our first coat and I'm gonna put three coats of primer on and that's really gonna stick it and that's gonna cover it all. You can see now that I'm done priming, it's all very evenly coated. I got some runs, but you can't really see it in the camera, but I did get some runs, but we'll be able to sand those out. Uh, the pieces came out pretty good. I laid it on pretty thick. Um, I painted the cabinet too, the sides of the cabinet. We got all primed up. Um, I got all the dents out. It's looking very, very good. I know this is gonna turn out perfect I mean I want perfection I mean I that's what I, I I don't want any kind of mishaps and I don't want to leave anything I don't want to leave any stone unturned you know so now it's the next day and the primer is now hardened and it's sandable now and we're gonna take the cabinet out and we'll keep working on it you know we'll keep chugging along so yes you have to sand it multiple times you have to sand it first to get it ready to prime and now that we've primed it we have to sand it again but this time we're not going to be using 80 grit, we're gonna be using a finer grit, not, not as rough as 80. So what I'm doing here, this is a trick of the trade. This is what people don't tell you in you know car paint videos. That's just a 99 cent can of flat black spray paint. I'm gonna put an ever so light coat over this. It's called a guide coat. This is very crucial to getting a good paint job. I'm putting a super, super light, I'm not even coating it the whole thing of black spray paint. Uh, I'm taking 400 grit sandpaper, which is a lot finer than 80. As a rule of thumb, the closer the number is to zero when you're talking about sandpaper, the rougher it is. The closer the number is to infinity, the finer it is. And you see all these scratches there? That's what that black paint will show you. So I sanded it down with that light coat of black and you can see those scratches. You gotta get that out before you paint it. All right, so now that all the scratches are sanded out of it with 400 grit, uh, it's ready to paint now, so I'm wiping it down with Prepol. It's called Prepsol. It gets all the oil and grease off of it. And here is the paint. It is the same white paint that the dryer is painted with. Now, I did all the prep work and did all the priming and stuff, but I normally, I just let my dad paint it because uh, my dad is much more of a skilled painter than I am. And make no mistake about it, this is not like spraying with a spray can or, you know, painting your nails or something. Professional uh, car paint, like this is what this is, professional car paint, it's not easy to spray. There's a there's a technique to it to not get, um, to not miss any spots, and my dad has, has kind of mastered that art over painting our cars or his cars and whatnot um, because it's just too expensive to pay people, honestly. So here is the finished product. This is three coats of polyurethane uh, white paint, and uh, it just came out so beautiful and perfect. There's no runs, there's no real blemishes. I think when this thing is put together, it's gonna be absolutely perfect. I absolutely cannot wait for some of the pieces I have at the plating shop to be back. Some pieces I have are being gold plated and it's going to be so nice when this is done. So the next video will be me putting this back together and it's going to be a literal brand new machine so make sure you subscribe.